not a YouTuber just like making videos. And an educated man once said, in order to solve a problem, first you have to figure out what that problem is. And we all know the best way to solve a problem, first of all, you have to isolate it. <laughs> now, name of this dissertation is Bubble Gum and Tape Ain't Gonna Fix the Black Community. Now, if you follow my videos, you know I really don't criticize the black community too tough. I don't criticize black people too tough because I'm just. I don't know. I, I can't expect people to think like I think. I can't expect people to read the books that I read. You know. But, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm just going to explain a little bit on, on why, you know, I choose not to constantly, you know, bash so called black people in Western civilization. You know, and try to debunk, you know what I'm saying, popular beliefs or popular consensus. Now, if you really want insight, or really want to, you know what I'm saying, you, you got to read books. You got to read books by Randall Robertson, Ivan Van, Van Sortima. But I understand it's very, it's a whole lot easier to get in front of that computer and listen to some schmuck on YouTube with his mindless banner, you know, talking a whole, a whole lot of blase blase. You know, 99% of the shit on YouTube is just should be considered just as entertainment. You know, nobody's really, uh, you know, it, it, to, to find the truth is very hard. You know, you're not gonna, you know. <laughs> but I see that a lot of people, they, they judge the sort, when it comes to YouTube, they judge, judge their sor, uh, sources of information by how many subscribers they got and view counts they get. You know, that's like me saying, you know, uh, Two Chains and Lil Wayne got to be the best rappers. Got to be the rappers that speak the truth due to their popularity. You know what I'm saying? These rappers got to got to be better than uh, uh, Rock Kim and Nas and you know what I'm saying and all these other dudes that are, you know, that you don't hear on the radio often and so forth. Okay, now here it goes. Now, the black woman. Did the black woman destroy the black community? Is she responsible for destroying the black community? No. Now, people have said that the welfare system, even Afrocentrics and buck dancers alike, have stated that, you know, the white man you know, created the welfare system to destroy the black family, and the black woman doesn't need a man. Some of that is true, but if these social programs discombobulated the black family, that means the black family couldn't have been too strong to begin with, couldn't have had a solid foundation to begin with. I think about the, a lot of my Latinos. Now, first of all, stop crit just criticizing the black women for getting, you know what I'm saying, these social services and shit like that. I'm like, most modernized countries um, give these benefits to their citizens. You take this, th these, uh, uh, yeah, I do admit there's people that misuse it, but you take these benefits away and you see all fucking hell break loose. You know, either way, you're going to be coming out your money for when it comes to that tax dollar, because then if more crimes on the street, they have to hire more police officers. That costs tax money. Have to build more prisons, more tax dollars. You know what I'm saying? To put these guys through court, you know, in the judicial system, more tax dollars. So you guys don't make no fucking sense whatsoever. You don't even think economically. Okay, here it goes. The, the, the black family had, didn't have a chance to really uh, uh, build a foundation for itself and grow. After slavery, you had reconstruction. Where black people was building their own farms and uh, trying to build their communities, going to church and whatnot. You know, oh, well, that's when the black woman and the black man went to church together. You know, now the church is 75% black women. And I think that, but also you have to look at, you know, back in the days, the cost of living was a lot cheaper. A man didn't even have to have a high school uh, diploma to support his whole entire family, whether he's black or white. You know, thing, uh, things have changed, you know. 
I'm like, back then you didn't even have to be able to read or write to be a tr to get a truck driver job, you know, because become truck. It's funny because I was talking to like this white truck driver, and he said once they incorporated, he was an old school guy that you had to be able to be literate to drive a truck. They basically did that to try to stop black <laughs> men from becoming truck drivers, but they <laughs> figured out, you know, what I'm saying. Um, they lost over half their force because a lot of the white dudes couldn't read or write. So that's just an interesting tidbit right there. But as far as the black female goes, you know, if you have the Latino women, like you have Latino women, you know, crossing over that fence, illegal immigrants that are just living off the county, you know, getting Medicaid. I, I, I see it all the time. And I live in a Republican state and I see these... Uh, <laughs> These, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying, immigrants, you know, ain't even citizens, you know what I'm saying, uh, get these benefits. So, uh, unless we want to criticize, if you want to criticize black women, the descendants of slavery, then you need to also criticize these uh, Mexicans and Puerto Ricans and, uh, you know, West Indies that, that are doing it too. But, these other nationalities of women... When they get on the county, they don't just reject their mental about, oh, I don't need a man right now. I got my white daddy. <laughs> so, if the black American female are doing it, you know what I'm saying, that means that it had to have been a breakdown a long time ago. They just can't institute this and the black woman just automatically just rejects her, reject her man. Hence, the black men never had much strength and power in this country to begin with because the black man, the American black man, the descendant of slavery, Technically, does not have his own country. Oh well, yeah, yeah. America's our country, but you see what I'm saying. You know, we're always looked at as outsiders, African American, and this and that, and not really having pull. Like a Nigerian man, even though their country may, well, or whatever country, I don't country that's poor. A person from a poor Latin country, an African country, still the people in power of their country look just like them. Talk just like them. Same skin complexion just like them. The black men in America, we were so used to looking at our leaders, our presidents, and our politicians as being, you know, so people who have real power, are people who talk different than them, look different than them, and smell different than them, and, and, and so forth. Different ideologies, different beliefs, you know, so that, you know, that's. That's something that a lot, you're not going to get this kind of truth from these YouTube coons. They have, see, I have nothing to gain and nothing to lose. So therefore, you will get unbiased, undulterated truth from me. Uh, so, uh, I, I was, what else we're going to go into? As I said, black women destroying the, the black community. Unless you can prove the black woman is bringing guns into the community, opening up liquor stores, bringing drugs off the boat into the community, then you can't say shit. Now, can a black female teach a, a man how to be a man? I agree with you. No, she can't. I agree with you uh, on that. But, you know what I'm saying? The problems that plague this black community, you know, it wasn't initiated uh, by uh, the black woman. Now, as far as dealing with the problems of the black community, first of all, you have to isolate the black community from the rest of the community, which is impossible. You know, so... <laughs> You know, it's like a, a somebody, like an exterminator dealing with an outbreak. You know, what they do, they have to isolate it, you know, and just and try to nip it in the bud right then and there. The black community is connected to the mainframe. Now, the black community doesn't uh, operate like a sovereign nation. I'll take the um, Native Americans uh, or Native American reservations. Take the Lakota Nation, for example. You know, when the Lakota lacrosse team, yes, lacrosse is a sport created by Indians. Do your research. Um, when the lacrosse team went over to, to Britain, you know what I'm saying, to play their lacrosse team, the Lakota Nation issued out its own passports. It's all, The chiefs of the Lakota Nation... Uh, 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 made passports for these lacrosse players. Now, these lacrosse players had a hard time at the airport because they're looking, oh, these ain't official government passports. But they told them, like, yeah, we're not part of the U.S. government. We're part of the Lakota Nation, a sovereign nation. 
So unless black people can create some sort of sovereignty for itself, no, you're not going to get rid of the problems. Now, I'm not trying to secure the idea of blacks, you know, creating a separate nation. Now it's been done before. We know about Malachi York and the now Aryans. I hope I'm saying that right. And that was pretty much successful until they uh, uh, sabotaged him and railroaded him into the penal system because of uh, allegations of rape with a minor and so forth. But, first of all, you have to analyze what exactly is the black quote, unquote, community is. You know, is it just an area, a defunct area that's part of the mainframe, a part of a major metropolitan that is just pretty much a cesspool of, you know what I'm saying, ex-convicts, people with bad um, credit, um, toxic waste, impoverished neighborhoods, boarded up buildings. So, hence, the so-called black area is just an area where impoverished people can live at that will accept them. Rather than just some area that black said, hey, we're going to establish this area for ourselves and we're going to have such high morals and if people aren't living to these standards, we're going to boot them out. We're going to exile them. We're going to tie them to that goddamn palm tree and catapult them. <laughs> you know, so, and so when you analyze it logically, first of all, a lot of people don't want to live in these conditions. And I don't blame them. You're an American taxpayer, just like a, a, a um, I, I can't forget it, that, that football player's name. Jim Brown. Yes, like Jim Brown said, if you pay taxes, you know, you have the right to live anywhere in this country you want to live. You should not be, you know what I'm saying, just want to just uh, uh, settle down in an impoverished area where you have no control over anyway. Like, for instance, they talk about the black dollar. You know what I'm saying? We need to invest in black-owned businesses. I agree with that. But first of all, there's no such thing as the black dollar. <laughs> so I'm seeing a white man's face on it. But uh, if the if these uh, black businesses are providing a service and a product that I want, you know, if their product is as good as the next person over there, when I look at, you know, your typical black community, um, you know what I'm saying? I look at the highways and byways that pass through it, you know, all the commerce and traffic that goes through uh, on these uh, areas. You know, I look at, you know, there's a McDonald's and a Popeye's Chicken, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Long John Silver's. They're all there, the whole Pepsi Cola family. And I go inside these places and I'm like, you know, they're, they're employing a lot of black people. So if I go inside of McDonald's and see the employees are black and the, the manager is black, you know, it is something you have to think into. If the black community just relied on black-owned business for employment, yeah, we'll be in trouble. Now, I can understand that fast food jobs are very shitty, but it's better for a young boy to drop jalapeno poppers <laughs> inside the deep fryer than, you know, uh, popping off <laughs> them pistols. You know, so that... Um, I hate to be repeating myself, but we have to take into account of that. And sometimes we have to think realistically that the so-called black community, if there was one, is more of a, like a social construct. It really doesn't mean anything. You know, it, as I said before, it's an impoverished section of the city where black people just live at because it will accept them. You know, maybe because the rent is low or these places will don't care about if you have bad credit or if somebody's living off social services they can only live at in, in certain areas of the cities so hence if the suburbs you know let's say these Christian white people actually had a heart and said hey you know we want to build the projects right here in our own communities and accept these people from other communities to, to come here because we're all God's children. It's a Christian nation. God bless America. Hence, a whole lot of people from the so-called black community would be moving over to the suburbs. They'll move over to farmland. They'll move anywhere that accepts Section 8 vouchers. So, hence, there may not be a such thing as a black community 
if you look at as the terms of, you know what I'm saying, uh, a Native American community, I'm like, it's, I'm just looking at economically and realistically. For instance, there's a lot of projects where the white man will take his bulldozers, give these residents vouchers to move somewhere else, take their bulldozer and just wham, go right through it, tear down these projects or whatever where these crackheads and dope fiends used to linger and then turn around and build condos and now doctors and lawyers and prestige members of society is now living in a place where it was just squawk. I've seen this happen. So, and this goes back into what's the Native Americans. I think about the, the conflict with the Mohawks. Mohawk Valley near uh, Canada, in Canada where these white people wanted to expand the golf course. They already had their golf course, but they wanted to expand their golf course. But they were trading into Native American territory. This territory that was supposed to be sovereign nation. You know what the Indians did? They grabbed their guns. They, you know what I'm saying, they did a movie about it. They, uh, I'm like, they took over, you know, they were shooting at police officers. They said, hey man, this is our land. You can't come in here. And I said, we're claiming it all. We're claiming the grass. We're claiming the rocks. We're claiming the tree. This land is our mother. A Native American woman would, 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 would is, is, what did she say? She said something about if you try to violate our land, it's like violating our mother. I'm like, oh, you couldn't pay these, the, the white men couldn't pay these Indians to move. They said, no, this, this is our land. You know what I'm saying? They were stand, they were standing on, they took bulldozers, ran over cop cars. I, I forgot the name of the movie. It wasn't like a, a big movie. You think blacks are going to do that? You think when white men comes in, you know what I'm saying? All they have to do is give black people vouchers to move and they're gone. They're not going to just... Uh, you say, hey, this is our land. We're claiming the rocks and the trees. This land is our mother. You know, so that tells me, though, that's the reason why I don't criticize the black community too much because I don't know exactly what it is. Is it just, is it's an area to me that, uh, you know, that's just an impoverished place of the city where blacks really don't have any control over. You see boarded up houses and so forth. And when you're dealing with capitalism, in Western nations, and then I look at what goes on in Mexico and Brazil, and, and and all these other things. And then we talk about the South Side of Chicago. Oh, the South. Oh, it's so bad over there. Not every black area, or predominantly black area, is as bad as the South Side of Chicago. They kind of have to go to Chicago and Detroit. I can show you black neighborhoods or the neighborhoods where the majority of the residents are black. You know. Um, that are nice and clean. People actually walk their dogs. You know, not every city with a, a large black population has a real high crime rate. You know, I, I you know, I, as I said, I moved around as a kid. I lived in communities. So us black people are so used to just looking at our bad side or just, you know what I'm saying, just clinging on to our negativity. So, you know, how, how are we going to elevate from this or black people need to get it together? No. You know what I'm saying? I got good credit. I never be in the jail like shit. I want my fucking uh, individuality. The basis of Western ship, Western philosophy is individualism. If any of you guys are bothered to do your research. So at the end of the day, I'm an individual. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not like one of these guys causing all the problems, you know? And, you know, so, and it's, so, it's not like black people are, you know what I'm saying, one of the